audio and video clear is the audio and okay fine so we'll start again so this is the third nerve this is the fourth nerve so it is the trochlear nerve so it is a supra trochlear triangle is a very narrow triangle then you have the infra trochlear triangle which is between this is the fourth nerve this is the ophthalmic division of the trigeminal nerve so this infra trochlear triangle is also called as the parkinson's triangle okay this is also called as the parkinson's triangle so here you have the uh, carotid and the origin of the meningo hypophysial the origin of the meningo hypophysial trunk also occurs here so this is the infra trochlear triangle or the parkinson's triangle between the fourth nerve and the medial border of the fifth nerve on medial border of the ophthalmic division it is called as the infra trochlear triangle so if you drill this triangle you will enter into the mucosa of the sphenoid sinus then you have the antero medial triangle so these are the triangles of the cavernous sinus now we will enter the triangles of the middle cranial fossa these are the middle cranial fossa triangles you have two anteromedial and anterolateral triangles and a posteromedial and posterolateral triangles the anteromedial triangle is between the uh, v1 and v2 the ophthalmic and maxillary division so it is a triangle between the ophthalmic and the uh, maxillary division of the trigeminal nerve v1 and v2 and uh, here the line uh, the third line corresponds to the between the superior orbital fissure and the foramen rotundum so this is the triangle so this is the anteromedial triangle and then here is the anterolateral triangle which is between the maxillary and the mandibular division between v2 and v3 and the third boundary is between the foramen ovale and the foramen rotundum foramen rotundum through which the v2 or maxillary division exits and foramen ovale through which the v3 or the mandibular division exits so between these uh, two is the anterolateral triangle so drilling these two triangles you will again enter into the mucosa of the sphenoid sinus so then the posterior triangles of the uh, middle cranial fossa you have posteromedial and posterolateral the posterolateral triangle is called the glasscox triangle the posteromedial triangle is also called as the cabasis triangle okay so this is the greater petrosal greater superficial petrosal nerve which we have seen previously so greater superficial petrosal nerve joins with the lesser superficial petrosal nerve to form the nerve of pterygoidal or the median nerve okay so this is the greater superficial petrosal nerve so this is the posterolateral triangle so this posterolateral triangle is bounded by the greater superficial petrosal nerve here the part of the lateral part of the mandibular division below the point of transection of the greater superficial petrosal nerve and the v3 okay so it is bounded by the greater petrosal nerve and the bound, uh, lateral part of the v3 below the point of intersection of the greater superficial petrosal nerve with v3 okay here the uh, content uh, this it, this is the middle meningeal artery it passes through the foramen spinosum the foramen spinosum is here the middle meningeal artery exits the cranial cavity or enters the cranial cavity through the foramen spinosum within the posterolateral triangle so if you drill this triangle if you drill this glasscox triangle if you drill this posterolateral triangle you will enter into the infra temporal fossa okay you will enter into the infra temporal fossa so then this is the posteromedial triangle posteromedial triangle also called as the cavasis triangle so the cavasis approach is concerned with the anatomy of this posteromedial triangle okay so uh, this is a posteromedial triangle bounded by so this is the petrous apex the arcuate eminence which is coming here and this is the lateral part of the uh, v3 above the point of transection of the greater superficial petrosal nerve and the other end is the greater superficial petrosal nerve so the cavasis triangle is bounded by the lateral part of the uh, mandibular division above the point of transection of the greater superficial petrosal nerve and on the other side is the a uh, greater superficial petrosal nerve so here in uh, this part lies the cochlea the lateral apex uh, the cochlea lies in the lateral apex whereas the petrous carotid lies in this part the medial part of the triangle is occupied by the petrous carotid okay this is the petrous carotid so drilling this we will enter into the lateral part of the clivus 
So if you dil lateral to the carotid and medial to the cochlea, you will enter the uh, lateral part of the clivus. So that is the significance of this Kawasis triangle or the Kawasis approach. I'll repeat this triangle is very important. It is bounded by greater superficial petrosal nerve and lateral boundary of the V3 above the transection of the greater petrosal nerve. The lateral apex is occupied by the cochlea. The medial part is occupied by the uh, petrous carotid. So drilling the bone medial to the petrous carotid and lateral to the uh, cochlea, you will land in, you will enter into the lateral clivus. So this is the principle of Kawasis approach. So these are the four triangles of middle cranial fossa. Then this is a summarizing picture of all the uh, eight triangles, the four triangles of the uh, uh, cavernous sinus and the four triangles of the middle cranial fossa. So here, what I want to show here is, so what you see here, this is the infratrochlear triangle or this is the fourth nerve and this is the V1 and here you have the infratrochlear nerve. So the content is the cavernous carotid from where the meningohypophyseal trunk arises. So here you see the meningohypophyseal trunk. So from the meningohypophyseal trunk, you will have the dorsal meningeal artery and the tentorial artery. Dental also, it is called as the artery of uh, Bernaschi and Casinori. So these are the, 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 this is the branch which supplies the meningioma, which is a frequent MCQ in many of the entrance examination. So the tentorial, the arterial supply to the meningioma comes from the tentorial artery called as the Bernaschi and Casinori, which arises from the meningohypophyseal trunk, which arises from the cavernous carotid in the infratrochlear triangle or the Parkinson's triangle. So here you see the infralateral trunk lying in front of the sixth nerve. So now the uh, clival triangles. So this clival triangles, you have two triangles. One is the posterolateral and this is the posteromedial triangle. So this is the posterolateral triangle. So here, what you see, this is the uh, uh, fourth nerve entry, cochlear nerve entry, and here is the sixth nerve entry, the abdusan nerve entry. Okay, so this is a Dorillos canal. So this, uh, the point of uh, one point is the uh, entry of the sixth nerve. The other point is the entry of the fourth nerve. Then the third point is the point uh, where the first vein joins the superior petrosal sinus, just lateral to the fifth nerve. So this is the fifth nerve, the dorsal root of the fifth nerve. So just lateral to the uh, fifth nerve, the dorsal root of the fifth nerve, the first vein which joins the superior petrosal sinus. So that is the third point. So the triangle connecting these three is called as the posterolateral triangle of the clivus. So exactly at the middle of the triangle, the trigeminal nerve, the dorsal root of the trigeminal nerve enters. Okay. So this is called as the posterolateral clival triangle. And then you have the posteromedial clival triangle. So here again, these two points are the same here, whereas instead of this point, you have to bring this triangle here. Okay, that is why it is a posteromedial triangle. So this point is the posterior clinoid process. Okay, this is a posterior clinoid process. This is the point of entry of the uh, sixth nerve. This is the point of entry of the sixth nerve and this is the point of entry of the fourth nerve. So these are the, the three, the triangle is formed by connecting these three points. So what the, triangles, the significance of this triangle is, this triangle exactly corresponds to the posterior border of the, or posterior part of the cavernous sinus. So here lies the posterior boundary of the cavernous sinus. So the cavernous sinus is exactly within this triangle. So if you enter here, you will enter into the cavernous sinus. So these are the two triangles of the clivus, the posterolateral triangle, the posteromedial triangle. So hope uh, this anatomy is uh, clear. So I have made my level bus to keep this anatomy simple. There are 10 triangles concerned with the skull base. The four triangles concerned with the cavernous sinus. Four triangles concerned with the cavernous sinus. Uh, the four triangles are concerned with the middle cranial fossa. 
and then two triangles are concerned with the clivus. So the basic anatomy of these triangles is very important for various skull base approaches. So in this uh, subsequent session, now we, are, we will also discuss about the skull base approaches. Hope uh, this uh, webinar, uh, this session was clear. This is a very, very complicated topic. This uh, skull base triangles and skull base um, uh, anatomy is a very, very complicated thing. So I have tried my level best to keep it simple and also in an understandable way.